Okay, so uh, let's let's kind of uh, bring everyone up to speed. We're just kind of waiting for others to join in. Thank you for joining this live stream. Uh, this is about oh, so this is okay. solving uh, Margaret Shoup Smith, who went by Jan. This was just about an hour, two hours ago, and uh, bringing you some information that can be used on a press release, uh, kind of hearing it from the source. So originally we had two days scheduled here in Lakeland, Florida, and we kind of didn't have that much to go off of other than that she traveled the, the road from her house to Walmart and then it was, it was caught on license plate readers or LPR systems that she was in this very specific area. And so doing so, we kind of pinpointed to a various amount of locations to where we could search. And then coming to our last location of the day, it was kind of like, all right, so we have nothing else to go off of, but we're gonna throw our boats in. And then doing so, we found two trucks. This was and yesterday. This was yesterday. Yeah. So we found two vehicles, uh, Doug dived on them, and you know we were able to, for the most part, clear them. And then we called law enforcement, and then this is where things get interesting because they kind of, uh, we, 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 we told them who we were, Adventures with Purpose, Sonar mm -hmm. Search and Recovery, and then we told them our cause for being in the area. Also mentioning we are in Lakeland, Florida. Um, been here for only two days, two, three days now, and um, this was the case that we came here for, for Margaret. And uh, this, we were searching bodies of water when we came upon the two trucks. We were not looking for a truck, we were looking for a Kia Soul. So already we were like, okay, this is not our target. However, finding the trucks uh, brought in law enforcement to the scene, which ended up helping us with moving further along with the case that we solved today. So in doing so, we told them what we were looking for and they said that we had some more information that we can provide to you as to where Jan was last located. As it turns out, she was further up north than we had originally suspected. Yeah, we weren't even in the right neighborhood. And she was actually caught on a, from a report, an officer report that she was actually previously in a little bit of a fender bender going down the street over by a church further up north. And then from there, we were able to pinpoint, okay, so she was in a car accident here. And then she, like, not bad enough where she had to get a tow truck, but, you know, like, she was able to drive away. Mm -hmm. And so she drove away, and then we started from that area. Yeah, so that information we ended the night with. Um, and so we used the night to kind of do detective work, figuring out where we need to search with the new information. And then we started this morning search at a boat ramp, uh, working with... Uh, Jeremy, um, Britt, and Adam. Um, so having them come in helping us as a different resource allowed us to then split up in this new area that we had not searched yet, uh, which was really helpful and really important. And so at our first boat ramp this morning, we were unsuccessful at locating anything at that ramp, but then we were able to come up with a game plan uh, on where to go from there. And just, just uh, bringing it back that this is an edited video. We're definitely going to be showing you all of our footage We have lots of great shots and footage from today as you know as we do um, So the story of this we're just giving you very 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 basic story. However with that said um, get bringing in uh, Britain with depths of history Nug or Jeremy with um, exploring with Nug and Adam with um, Adam Brown Adventures. Adam Brown Adventures. Um, they're they're here with us right now. We then sent them, uh, or they left to go and explore some other lakes, and they're going to tell us uh, their version of that story, and then we're going to bring you back into uh, finding uh, Jan. All right, All right say hello, everyone. What's going, on, everybody? So who's going to start? I guess I'll start. Um, this morning we decided that Mud Lake. Oh, never mind. He no, Sorry. Mud Lake was a, good, was a good was a good location to uh, to start our search, and that was at 8 a.m. We sonared that pond and did not find any answers, and that's when Jared basically told us that we need to split off um, separately so that we can cover more ground and basically see if we can check more ponds because we have three to four boats, so I mean we can search a wide variety of areas. So we decided to go to Lake Crago, which was a very good option. It seemed a little bit far out of the way, but we decided to go to it anyways and scan that boat ramp. Didn't end up seeing too much, and that's when Jeremy tried to call us to the shore 
yeah. because he got a text from Jared saying a couple miles down the road they had found a vehicle. Yep. And Jared, do you want to go next? I mean, yeah. Once we got the once we got the text message, you know that they uh, that you guys located her. Um, essentially, we knew that we're in the wrong spot, so we packed up and headed over there. Within ten minutes, we was on scene. The um, and it was just. And we got we got debriefed from Doug. Told us exactly what's going on, and and then and the rest is history. They were, uh, you know, the, the the car was the car was in in the very weird right. spot. Yeah. It was in a really weird spot, and yeah. it was shallow. It was only like seven foot deep, just enough to hide a car. But keep in mind, if it's a green car and it's green water, right. the water was gonna, very green. We, we noticed that it's going to blend in. And I also noticed too, if you look on Google Maps of this location, there are absolutely no homes built, and that's because the aerial picture that was taken was before July, which is at the time that she went missing. So. That being said, she could have been going down that road late at night, it being dark, she could have crashed into the river. So it's very, you know, there's a, there's a lot of heightened emotions and and uh, it's amazing that the family has answers. And yeah. I just, I feel like we were led to that spot today. I really, really do. So. Yeah, we, we actually wanted to touch on that more. Uh, Adam, Adam missed a little bit of yesterday's search, but we're glad to have him here today. Um, but we, we did a lot of searching yesterday, but bringing us into how we got to her final location, there's actually a really, really interesting story to that that we were going to touch on. Uh, thank you, boys, for, for you know helping with the search today and for adding that to the story. Um, Carson. Yeah, so basically we had this last location. We looked on Google Maps and this gated community, but on Google Maps there were no houses. It was just a pond that had been built. And now keep in mind this pond is fairly new it was built and we kind of decided that we need to go here you know there's there's nowhere else nowhere no more bodies of waters to search that would make sense that would make logical in, in our in our news that we got yesterday or that the officers were able to, able to give us that put us at a church where uh she was pulled over, there was a traffic stop, there was an accident, uh, maybe a fender bender that happened. And when when she was finally, you know, let go to drive away, that put her at this spot where there was this little dirt road. And that dirt road led us to this um, neighborhood, which then got us to this little pond. And so anyways, as we put our boat on that pond, just to, as, as a just precaution, it didn't seem likely, it didn't seem logical, but as a precaution, we searched it and sure enough, this was uh, where uh, Carson and, and Jared were in the boat and were able to identify a vehicle underwater, very, very shallow, which we're getting to. You know, um, with Jared and Doug and, and the boat, I, I remember thinking like, you know, there's there's no way there's a vehicle in this little tiny pond, There's it, but if there is, you know for certain that it has to be her vehicle. Yeah, and I, I was thinking like, why not just throw a magnet, it's so small. You guys put the boat in i was like okay but well, they're gonna search it and then that's I, I i missed this whole process of you guys locating it yeah and then the the moment that i heard jared say that we have a vehicle like holy smokes we have a vehicle like it was just like instant chills like that's when i kind of got this feeling that like i i knew that we may have just located jan it, it was like one of those moments you can't really describe it's you just kind of like have to take in and then and so you guys should have put a magnet on it which is super easy yeah. because of how shallow it was came up on on sonar screen um like almost touching the, the top of the water right yeah it was it was 18 inches below the surface of the water so less than two feet right and but we did hear from the neighborhood that that pond had not been drained i mean it only had been i think it was 10 months um then till now and so it was plausible that she had not been seen and that you know that's kind of how it how we got we got there um so how bring me into the scene how did i how did we get licensed so play? you know um after we had found that there was a vehicle in the water the next step was to find out was this the target vehicle that we need to find and of course you know we have to dive on it and i hear jared and doug discussing like like we we need to find out if this is our vehicle now so i run to josh and i'm like josh get your swimsuit get your goggles like we have a vehicle. In I was pond. I was talking to a neighbor who was like, "Oh, I know who you guys are." And then we were just kind of chatting as they were searching, and all of a sudden, 
Carson's like, get your get your swim shorts on. We need you to get in the water. And so this is kind of my funny part because I was like, okay, you need me, let's go. So I put my shorts on, grabbed the goggles, and I went over, dove into the water, went to swim out to identify the car. And I didn't really think, we are in Florida, there are, you know, haters in the water. I didn't think of like, that wasn't even a thought in my mind. So go down, touching the car, super shallow. As soon as I got to it, I was just on top of it, almost elbows on it. And then the my first thing I had to do was identify the color, license plate, make and model. And so having goggles on, I was able to go under, and within a few minutes, we were able to identify that the license plate we were looking for was beginning in JLQ. And sure enough, it was a Kia. JLQ is a license plate. And at that moment, everything changed. I'm, I'm still surprised that you were able to see anything because that it, water was it just was like- It was very just, green. You, like, I couldn't tell the color. Biz. Yeah, I, I was trying my hardest to see the color of the car. I could see the car. It looked gray, and there was like kind of buildup yeah. on it. And then I was like, I don't know what color this is. And that's when I found the license plate. And I, Doug had taught me a trick where if you kind of swoosh the water like that and wait, it like kind of clears up for a second. And that's how I got the first Yeah, we, we even threw, Josh threw a drone up in the air with a polarizing lens it's filter. True. And you couldn't see anything. Yeah, no, as, a, as a test. 18 inches. Because sometimes water, we search with anything. a drone and in these green murky waters, it's like, okay, let's see if we can see anything down there. In clear water, you can. And like nice Oregon, beautiful waters. You can definitely see through the water with the polarizing lens. But out here, literally it was 18 inches deep and you couldn't see even a shadow with that drone. Yeah, and but, then um, moving forward, the next step was that we had to call law enforcement because the moment we find a for target vehicle, yes. it becomes a crime scene. So law enforcement wasn't called and they have been absolutely amazing in the area. Just great to work with, great people and you know, they came That's how we the got scene. there, is because of their information. Yeah. Yeah. If, it, if it wasn't for them, there were, there's, there's probably a probable chance that we wouldn't have been able to find Jan today. Yeah, also being able to team up with everybody else that was helping us search allowed us to work on these really small bodies of water, which don't seem like likely targets, and so they get saved for last, and we we're able to do that on our second. second it was, it was honestly like a huge collaborative effort between, you know, Britton, Adam, mm -hmm. Jeremy, and then law enforcement as well. Like everyone here had one goal, and that was to bring Jan home. Right. We, we haven't given Jerry his chat. Oh yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, you know, if it wasn't for Jared, <laughs> Jared being such a great, ambitious guy, and no, but, always but, having the determination yeah, to keep moving. We were forward. working with um, with a news crew, and I was saying, like, after we we found the vehicle, I was like, you watch it happen. Jared does not give up. Like, yesterday we were just so, like, our, our hopes were down. I was like, where else do we go? And that's when we got the information from the cops. And then it was like, Jared's like, we're in the wrong area. We need to go. We have, we have the wrong, we have the wrong information we're working on. And so Doug and Jared put their heads together last night and we were able to be like, we need to move the search, almost start over. It, it was absolutely insane to me that, you know, no, despite the odds against us, you know, searching like all these areas of water, having little to like barely any information that together as a group and a team effort, we can come together and just keep going and just keep searching. And it's, it's because of you guys and the support you give us that we're able to do this, you know, full time and bring answers home to families across the nation. Uh, Britton, do you want to touch a little bit more on that? Most definitely. I mean, you know, us getting together as a group and coming down to Florida, we've got a list of cold cases that we're specifically searching for. And to come down here for two days specifically searching for her, and then today, you know, to have all the locations set up, it just seemed like it was a perfect storm. We worked together as a team, we worked together as a group, and that's what brought her home. And, you know, it definitely is emotional. I. For those of you who watched with me and Thomas Thornton, thank you for your concerns. I'm doing okay from that whole event. And, you know, today just, you know, tells us even more. We just need more people out there doing this because think about it. I mean, she had been sitting there since April and all those homes being put in and everything like that. Nobody noticed anything. Yeah. So even a magnet would have helped, you know, you could have. Oh, yeah. And, and you can't really blame the neighbors for not checking the pond because you can't even see in it. You can't even see it. Exactly. No one would have known <laughs> if no we didn't.
I just can't wait for our upcoming trip because there's so many more cases that we're looking into and AWP works at such a fast pace. I mean, it's wake up at seven o'clock, hit the ground running. We're going to these spots. We have all these places in mind and it's a lot of hard work. So Jared, Doug, Carson, and Josh, you guys all do a great job. And Jeremy, Adam, I mean, we all work together as a great team. So it's a, it's a real team effort. Yeah, I agree. Definitely. Um, we were kind of running out of time, but I did want to mention the, the, the phone call that we had with uh, her Jan's daughter. Um, I think that's important to talk about. Yeah, you know, going into this case and especially the location, we didn't really know if this was an intentional or an accident. And we, we kind of took the case. You when you when you start a case, you have to think of the mindset of the person that was missing. You know their mindset takes you to different places you know were they heading to a friend's house were they you know intoxicated whatever the case may be and on this one we had um clues that led us to believe it, it was possibly um you know to, due to depression and so that kind of took us down a certain route however we were we we're also not working with um, much information from the family um we had a little bit um there was a case on this but we, we were kind of lacking the real, real true story of what happened. However, uh, after the vehicle was located, I did, we did have the opportunity to have a phone call with Jan's daughter, Marley. And Marley, who actually Jan was on her way to pick her up the night she went missing, um, was able to kind of confirm uh, just what happened that night and what transpired. And it, it, in, in my opinion, it really kind of turned out to be more of a um, confusion in in Jan as she was, you know, pulled over by the or ha in this accident, having some kind of trouble, which we're going to go into full detail on the on the main um, edited video we're going to go into. There's a lot of great story that that you really want to want to watch when we, when we get to the edit. Um, but just there's a lot of confusion going into the end of her last hour, um, and that led her to this neighborhood. Um, help me out here. Yeah, and you know. We, we don't want to, she, she basically was confused. She didn't know where she was going. She got in a car accident and then drove off and she was supposed to be somewhere, but there was no reason that she should have even been further up north in Lakeland. Nothing really brought her there rather than she was just driving really. Yeah. And we kind of see these with, uh, older missing persons cases that with dementia, with, with dementia right. and you know thomas thornton was, they just keep driving and they drive straight similar characteristics in this case with dementia cases and so that kind of was this huge like hard-hitting information that this wasn't really an on purpose but it feels more like yes an accident. but but with the phone call with your daughter was this like eye-opening moment of this makes sense like like we were working with all these clues and kind of making us, you know, run to these different ponds. And then when we got the final puzzle pieces of where she was, what happened last, her daughter's, you know, account of, of what happened in her phone call with her, it was like, all of this makes sense, yeah. which, which you don't necessarily get on every case. And you don't get, especially on unsolved cases, you don't get these answers of, of how and where. And so that was really powerful to hear from her daughter, um, and how she felt about it and, Which, she, and she was able to reach out to us because of our awareness that we spread so we just want to thank you for watching and supporting adventures with purpose and this entire movement that we're bringing across the country and even globally you know go check out um ways that you can donate to so we can keep doing this mm -hmm. so we can keep uh providing answers for people's families and that's what it's really all about definitely really. And, and the more successful we are with this the, the better we are we are getting at it. The more cases we solve and we even unsolve or not solve, um, we're, we're, we're learning and we're getting better at this and we're get, building better relationships with law enforcement and with tow companies and just, just an online presence. And it's really helping us be more successful and be more efficient in getting this done uh, for these families. So we just wanna do one final thank you for watching, checking out this breaking news. And we appreciate all of you guys bringing up uh, coming out here and watching us. And thank you, Britton, thank you, Jeremy, and thank you, Adam, for helping with this huge collaborative effort. Yes, most definitely. And Jared and Doug are here. Uh, they just wanted to see if we could do the leadership, and I think we did a good job. So you thanks. You did an amazing job. Thank you for being a part of this, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, thank you.
All right, uh, we still have a couple more cases here in Florida that we're going to be working on. Um, for now, I think we're just going to have some dinner and kind of decompress from today. And uh, thank you guys for your help. Thank you.